Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about feed rates on the milling machine. Now feed rates on the mill are expressed in inches per minute and that is how many inches the table moves in one minute and the table will be moving past the cutter. Now there's a simple formula for figuring out what your IPM should be, that's inches per minute. And that is IPM equals your RPM times the number of flutes on your cutter times the chip load. Now the RPM is the actual RPM of the machine, not the calculated RPM that you come up using your SFM formula. This is because on manual machines anyway, you're never going to be able to actually input that exact RPM unless it just happens to coincide with one on your machine. On a CNC machine, of course, you can program the exact RPM of the spindle, so of course you can use the calculated RPM. The number of flutes. That's the number of cutting edges that you have on your end mill or your face mill or whatever the tool is that you're using. Usually those are two flute or four flute, sometimes three. Uh, larger end mills might be six flute cutters and then of course face mills could have four or six or eight uh, depending on how big they are. The chip load is the amount of material that each cutting edge removes. So as you're going through this cut your end mill comes along and it peels off a chip however many thousandths of an inch thick you want that chip to be is your chip load. Now there's a rule of thumb for your maximum chip load on any machine and that is 1% of your cutter diameter. That means if you had a half inch cutter 1% of that would be five thousandths of an inch. If you had a quarter inch cutter 1% would be two and a half thousandths. If you had a metric end mill, for instance a 10 millimeter end mill, your chip load would be 0.1 millimeters. The formula actually works for both inch and metric and I'll talk about that in a bit. So keep in mind that is your maximum chip load. So that's if you have a really big rigid machine and you're just plowing off as much material as you can in a roughing cut. For finishing cuts you'd probably want to back that down so you get a better surface finish. And then of course for smaller machines and Bridgeport type mills that have a lot of axes of motion I generally cut that maximum number in half for roughing cuts. Otherwise you just hammer the thing out of alignment and uh, the, the machine itself is so flexible it just really can't handle 1%. So some examples of the math here. If you had 1115 RPM on your machine, which is one of the options on a step pulley bridge port, you have a two flute end mill and you're using a two thousandths chip load, you multiply all those things together and you get four inches a minute. Likewise, if you were running at 4200 RPM with a 3 fluid end mill, 3 thousandths chip load, you'd end up at 37 inches a minute. So that's quite a bit faster, uh, and most of that is due to the RPM, the increased RPM. If you go up to, maybe this is a face mill here, 1200 RPM, 6 flutes, or in this case 6 uh, carbide inserts, 10 thousandths chip load, you can zip through that at 72 inches a minute and still be totally fine. So like I said earlier, the same formula actually works for metric feed rates as well. And the only difference is these are given in millimeters per minute. So how many millimeters the table moves in one minute. Now the formula is the exact same. Your RPM and your number of flutes are the same. It's just that your chip load is given in millimeters instead. The 1% rule still works for max chip load. And if you look at these two examples here, these are the exact same end mill. Everything is equal. 1000 RPM, 4 flutes, uh, this is 1% of a 10 millimeter cutter and it's 400 millimeters per minute. This is the inch equivalent of that chip load and it's 15.748 inches a minute. So if you do that times 25.4, lo and behold, you pretty much get 400 millimeters per minute. So let's talk about the big time saver as far as machining goes and that is changing the number of flutes or the cutter material. So if you have the option of going from a two flute cutter to a four flute cutter, everything else remaining equal, you're going to double your feed rate. So uh, in this case, everything's equal, 2000 RPM, two flutes, 5000 chip load, do the math and you get 20 inches a minute. If you do it with a four flute cutter, you get 40 inches a minute. Now obviously if you're cutting a slot or a pocket or something like that, uh, you want to use a two flute cutter so that you have the chip clearance. But if you're profiling on the outside, then use a four flute cutter. You're going to finish a lot faster and of course in a machine shop environment, time is money. So the faster you can machine, the faster you get finished and the more money you make. 
Likewise, if you change from a high-speed steel end mill to a carbide end mill, it has similar results because you're going to be running carbide at a higher RPM. Using a carbide end mill allows you to machine at a higher SFM. Now, if you haven't watched my video on figuring out the RPM of the machines, I'll put a link down in the description. But generally, a carbide end mill can be run two to three times faster than high-speed steel, at least, uh, especially if you're going to be using coolant. So if we assume everything else is equal, and we use 6,000 RPM instead, four flutes still, 5,000 chip load still, we're up to 120 inches a minute, which means we're really zipping through that material and finishing our part a lot faster. So if you can switch to a four flute cutter, or at least a three flute, or you can go up to a carbide cutter instead of high speed steel, you can machine a lot faster and you can finish a lot faster and therefore make a little bit more money for yourself.